Hello everybody, it's the Mighty Glue Stick and we're back again with another Infernal update. This time we're going to be talking about another denizen of the Nine Hells, and that is the Imp. Now the Imp has been around for a very long time. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's me. Just sit over in the corner. They they come from the Nine Hells. Get, sit, sit, shh. They ca <sighs> Where was I? Okay, they come from the Nine Hells, and... Uh, yeah, I know. They uh, they are formed from a lemur. Generally, they're, they're formed from the... The uh, game would be nothing without us. Okay, yes, you've been around since the very beginning of Dungeons & Dragons back in 1977, appearing in the very first uh, uh, Monster Manual. Um, yeah, and... Coffee. Yeah, there's the coffee over in the corner. Go and sit over there. So the... The uh, they've had a little bit of a evolution over time. Um, there's You're too close to the microphone. Oh, I'm not too close to the microphone. They uh, they appeared as a player character race in Savage Species in 2003, and there's been variants um, such as the Blood Bag Imp, the Euphoric. Yeah, yeah. Shh. Uh, the Euphoric Imp and the Filth Imp appearing in the third edition Fiend Folio in 2003. Um, so imps in their basic form are a clever devil that ate. Can we do something else? No, this is what we do. Okay, this is the only reason why you're here. So clever. Uh, so imps are clever devils that aid evil mortals with dark counsel and trickery. Um, the filth imps are foul-smelling imps with a talent for forgery and translation. The bloodback imps are imps that serve as infernal nurse corps um, in the armies of devils. And the euphoric imp serves as a dealer of hallucinations. Yeah, well, not right now. But we go and beat him? no, God. Um, and they serve a where was I? Euphoric imps serve hallucinogenic slime. I'm not entirely sure why. How long are you doing this for? Well, longer the longer you talk and distract me. So, <clears throat> okay, in the book. We have imps um, in 5th edition, are uh, tiny fiends, devil shape changes. Oh, that's a good photo. Yeah, I know. Um, they are lawful evil, and their armor class is 13 due to their small size. They have 10 hit points, a speed of 20 feet on the ground, and 40 feet in flight. So they spend most of their time... Oh. Yeah. Um, they have a flight of speed of 40 feet, so they spend most of their time flying around or perching, ready to fly. And the the bulk of their time is spent invisible or shape-changed. Now, originally, they could shape... I'm... Yeah. Um... Yes, sit and be quiet. Uh, they are shape-changers. And they can use their action to polymorph into a beast form that resembles a rat with speed of 20, a raven, 20 foot uh, speed on the ground, or 60 foot fly speed. So they can actually fly faster as a raven. Um, so they would travel long distances in raven form. As a spider, where um, they can climb as fast as they can walk. Um, or originally they could also transform into goats. However, that's quite large compared to their natural form, so I, th I can understand why they dropped that out of 5th edition. But if you wanted to, you could have them transform as goats as well. Uh, and back into its true form, of course, which is a small humanoid, um, classically devilish looking, with uh, horned head, cloven little feet, um, and wings, bat-like wings, and a scorpion-like stinger tail on a segmented sort of tail that comes out the back of them. Yes, you're very pretty. Um, and they can carry equipment, although they generally don't. Um, but they may have message tubes or potions or some such thing. They can see magically in darkness. Um, so darkness, even magical darkness, never impedes their vision. And they have a magical resistance, which gives them advantage on saving throws against all spells and other magical effects. Everything. Um, so they are magical in nature. They have a pitiful strength of 6, a dexterity very high of 17, constitution is 13, intelligence is 11, wisdom is 12, and charisma is 14. So they're charming little things, really. 
um, and they're very, very persuasive. They are able to be summoned and serve as the familiars of similarly aligned um, spellcasters, wizards and sorcerers and warlocks and things. Um, so any evil character they will attach themselves to because there's a slight chance um, if they put in enough effort and work that they may turn them to evil to the point where they will condemn themselves to hell whereupon the imp has got a tiny claim on that mortal's soul and that's a good bargaining chip to further themselves in the hierarchy of hell um, so that's really their entire focus they're looking at the long-term picture because these are immortal beings uh, chances are this imp has done this hundreds of times before um, so in their their, their, their guys, their role in the mortal plane, they are consummate spies and thieves and go-betweens and go-tos for, for wizards generally and other beings and um, also serving the purposes of an infernal master that they've sworn fealty to. Of course, all devils by their very nature must uh, swear fealty to Asmodeus, but they also swear fealty to whoever raised them up and... Um, that that's very important to them so they serve their masters with absolute loyalty due to their many many years as a lemur being torn apart constantly for not doing what they're told so they have a bite in beast form or a sting so they bite when they're a spider or a fly or a raven um, is has the same poisonous effect as their stinger does uh, it's plus five to hit, has reach of five feet on one target, does five points of piercing damage, and the target must make a DC 11 constitution saving throw or take 10 points in damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. So it's, I would like to think of it as a, a, a vicious acid attack. Um, if you fail your saving throw, it'll go into your bloodstream and do far more damage, but otherwise you're still going to end up with a wicked um, searing wound. They have... Um, the ability to turn invisible until it attacks or its concentration ends. So it's a spell-like effect. And any equipment that it carries or wears is also invisible with it. However, it can't turn entire people invisible uh, because it can't carry them. Um, so it's really limited what, to whatever's on its person. I would say it could probably lift up a, a say, a helmet or a shield or something like that, maybe, and turn that invisible, which would be a hell of a surprise if you fire a missile attack at a mage and it deflects off something in midair that rematerializes suddenly as an imp carrying a shield in front of its master. So imps serve a purpose. Um, in the in the nine hells, they are all over the place, flying around like flocks of ravens, um, constantly on task for whatever they've been ordered to do and it's because they basically spend their lives in service that whenever you see imps um, in depictions of drawings and things they're usually leering with a with a cheeky mischievous smile uh, because when they're not tasked with something which if they fail is going to end up with them being tortured or maimed or brutalized um, they don't take anything seriously. I mean, their entire existence up until this point has been one long torment. So being an imp is euphoric for them. It's a boon. It's it's comparatively heavenly, being able to soar above the torment on the ground that the Lemures have to suffer, that they now have this small measure of freedom uh, to rise above, that, the glimmer of hope in the Nine Hells, that through their perfect service, they can raise up in the ranks. And um, for most of them, they are learning the ropes as they go about exactly how the politics of the Nine Hells works, because this is the first time they've had a modicum of intelligence for a very long time. And of course, the penalty for failure is being busted back to being a Lemur again, whereupon they will forget everything that they knew and start again, which is a fate worse than death. Death, of course, is something they don't really have to worry about when they're in the mortal realm. Um, it's the failure, more than their actual demise of their physical form, that is the really horrible thing for them. Um, if they get killed on the Nine Hells, they die forever. If they get killed in the mortal realm, they just basically dissolve into a black ichor, and um, a vaporous form reforms in the Nine Hells, and back into an imp again, where they're probably promptly busted back to being a Lemur. So, that is the imps and their and their their basic strategy for themselves. 
how they interact with uh, mortals or demon lords is up to you. Um, but as I say, they are really, really good at sneaking around the Nine Hells. They have um, skills of deception, plus four, insight, plus three, persuasion, plus five, and plus five on stealth. Um, so even while they're invisible, they're also extremely stealthy and very good at being invisible. They have damage resistance to cold, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing uh, from non-magical weapons that aren't silvered. Uh, they are immune to fire and poison and immune uh, to the condition of being poisoned. Um, and they've got dark vision out to 120 feet, um, which also penetrates in uh, magical dark vision. Um, and a passive perception of 11. They speak infernal, common, and I would say over the years they pick up a great many other languages as well. So imps, at first glance you would think they seem pretty puny. Um, and if you're facing a cloud of them, really, you've got to worry about swarm attacks with their stingers and things. And um, they are able to carry weapons, so they can probably stab you with a dagger. But they are tiny um, and fairly ineffectual. However, in their guise as a infiltrator agent or a spy or an assassin, they can quite easily carry potent venoms and toxins and put them anywhere they want. Um, the act of pouring toxins into a drink is not something they need to turn visible for. It's not a direct attack. So they could be poisoning the entire banquet table of a bunch of nobles with nobody any the wiser that they are there. And then they could easily transform into a rat, hang out in a cage somewhere. Um, nobody would even need to know that the, f the wizard has a uh, an imp familiar. Uh, so they would disguise the fact that the, the wizard is actually a, a foul and evil person up to no good. So, <clears throat> I'll get back to my little guest here, and I'll leave you, thing, you guys to your weekend. Um, I hope you enjoyed this bonus update, and as always, comments and such are welcome. <laughs>